Igen. Some weeks ago, uh, I was actually having lunch with Brent. And at that lunch, he was sharing some of his ideas with me about happiness and work. And at the same lunch, I was sharing some of my thoughts with him about how really his job and my job and the job of people like both of us is to be students of social change for our clients. So actually, I find it really fitting today that I'm going to stand here and tell you that we're standing on the edge of a perfect storm of social intelligence. Oh, wow, we really jumped in here. Let's, let's back up. Okay, that's where we started. So what is social intelligence? Social intelligence is really just knowledge that arises out of the intersection of society, technology, and our ability to make sense of the world around us. And, and this is the space that I play in. Now, now, there we go. Okay, so what we're seeing is that these three areas are in a feedback loop that are evolving faster and faster. And we're seeing evidence of this in exponential curves like this. Exponential growth that we are seeing in the, the growing power of our computers, in worldwide patent and innovation rates in global adoption rates for cell phones, internet use, smartphones, and social media. And if you look at that curve and the date where things are at, you'll see that we're about to enter the, a sharp vertical takeoff point that's really going to uh, have tremendous implications for our near future. We're already beginning to see this play out in how each generation prefers to communicate. The latest generations are already growing up with smartphones, swipe and gesture interfaces, 24-7 mobile internet access at their fingertips. They're probably going to communicate constantly in short bursts and tolerate the net knowing more about them constantly than you and I can imagine being comfortable with. And the significance of this is that each generation is producing orders of magnitude more information than the generation before it. So we're going to need new tools handle that storm of information. And so this is, again, this is the area where I look in. And this is a, I'm a student of change. And for me to get an idea of what the tomorrow's tools may look like, we can look at the social media intelligence tools and innovations that we have today. I'm going to break these into three areas just for simplicity. And the first area is social network analysis, actually a very well-established discipline. Uh, for most of us, Social media is synonymous with social networks. And this is because we're social animals. We're concerned with relationships, influence, reputation. We're concerned with communities of like interest. We're, con we're concerned with how friends and people work together. However, that being said, the type of information you're most likely to encounter in digital communications are descriptive communication, descriptive statistics like volume. Volume is a very popular measurement. And it's used to um, basically tabulate, count up the number of mentions and occurrences of around an issue, around a topic across the social media space. However, unfortunately, a volume can conceal the fact that our collective conversations can consist of a lot of subcurrents that are disconnected. It can consist of polarized communities that themselves aren't talking to each other. So to address this issue, I'm watching this innovation space around the area of natural language processing and text mining. And we're seeing tools that are just really beginning to map out what's going on inside all of these conversations for conversation discovery, for, for identifying brand and topic associations. Another really interesting area of development right now is sentiment analysis. And sentiment analysis is basically uh, how computers go out and find words that are loaded with positive and negative uh, content and meaning and combine them all together to give a big picture of public opinion around an issue. It's still a frontier research area. And this is basically because computers, like humans, aren't really all that good yet at making sense of sarcasm and professional lingo and slang. Hopefully we'll, we'll conquer that soon though. So now with that as our uh, foundation point, I'm gonna 
start talking a little bit about the future. I'm, I'm really here to talk about visioning. And um, the future of social intelligence systems, uh, first of all, I'm a dreamer. So I would like to think that in the very near future, we're going to have networks and information gathering systems that span Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and all social network platforms without the firewalls, as well as audio and video and phone and voice. Um, I think that uh, we're going to see uh, devices, commonplace everyday items begin to acquire computing power and the ability to record and communicate so that in essence, everything around us is going to become sources of information about our behaviors, preferences, and lives. I believe that um, we're going to see... Um, oh, I'm just going to move on here. Sorry. Lost that particular point. Um, we are going to see the rise of automated editors. We're going to see computers begin to do things that people really only do. We're going to see computers being able to do things like summarize mass amounts, mount, massive amounts of articles, documents, and conversations in an intelligible way. And this is going to enable all of us, along with smart systems, smart agents, software agents, smart filters and searches, to become our own researchers. We are going to see the rise of personal expert systems where these software systems are going to be able to provide expert analysis for each of us for happiness, for health, for nutrition, for finances. And I want you to imagine the tremendous amount of amazing information that that is going to produce for medicine, for economics, for public policy. I think we're also even going to see smart systems that are going to be able to look at people who are missing from digital networks and say interesting things about them simply by the footprints that they are leaving behind in other people's networks. I think we are going to see, I would like to see, that um, online networks are going to match real human network behaviors. Um, I think we're going to see real space networks of medical devices and consumer products integrate with communication networks to help us have more independence and more health and freedom. And I would like you to see a day where our financial value, our buying power, is not limited by our financial assets, but also includes our network power. So tomorrow we're entering the perfect storm. The storm means opportunity for innovation. It means opportunity for commerce. It means opportunity for personal change. It also is opportunity for all of us to become students of change. Thank you, Guy.